Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Plans video. In this video, I'll be showing you some more uses of the variable system, some common mistakes people have been making, and I'll also show you a new autopilot I've been working on for the SWL10. So, let's get started. So this is the SWL10, and it has a controller for the new autopilot I've been working on. But first we're going to look at some variable system things. So I want to start with how to use the variable system to have basically extra activation groups. I've gone over how to make a startup sequence where you have to have a switch and another switch and then another switch. But I'm just going to show you how to make a simple switch that controls something like a light. So here we have a light, and that is way too big for this plane, but whatever. So we have a light the switch and kernel is on activate one and then if I were to set this light to say activate one now I can just do that through the settings so activation group one and the switch by default is on activate one so if I'm to load the level and then if I were to turn the switch you can see the light turns on and I can also activate this light using just the activation group controls and that's fine but let's say you've used all eight activation groups in the game and you want more well, there's an easy way to do that. It's actually one of the simplest uses of the variable system. It doesn't even use the variable setters panel. First thing you want to do is think of what you want to call your activation group, or really variable. I'm going to just say activate 9. So instead of activate 1, we're going to put activate 9. And then I hit, hit enter, and you can see that it, the input is now activate 9. And then, uh, you obviously can't put the activation group of this beacon light to be 9. So what I'd say is set this back to all, basically, on, really. And then the input, currently it's none, meaning that input is basically always on. Then the activation group controls when it's on or not. But in the input, we're going to put activate 9, which is the name of our variable. And then we're going to hit enter. So if the variable activate 9 is set to 1, then this light will turn on. Now, if we were to go and try this out, and this is actually the common mistake that a seen people make, it's only one common mistake actually. We can see the light is always on even when we click the switch once. And we can't turn this off at all. And there's a simple reason for this. If a switch is set to one of the activation groups, like activate 1 or activate 2 or all the way through 8, then something called interaction type is not required. And I mentioned interaction type in part 1 of my variables tutorial series. Now, since we're using a variable that's not an activation group, we want to have an interaction type. And I've mentioned interactive types and variables part 1, as I've said. So I'm not going to tell you the details of this, but we want to set this to toggle for our purposes. So interaction type, and then we set this to toggle. And then, as we'll see, when we load the level and try and turn on our beacon light, we can easily toggle it on or off. And also, if we forget to add the attribute interaction type to a switch, then it will function as if it is set to continuous. I actually think it's once, but pretty much if we forget to set the interaction type, the behavior you saw before happens. We just need to remember to have the input of the light, or whatever it is, and rotators and things that have other settings are a little more complicated, but the principle is the same really if you want to activate something. So we want to set a variable, let's say activate 9, or you can have it anything you want, it can be anything, any string of characters really. We want to set the variable of the thing we're going to turn on, say a light, to the same as the input of the switch or button. And they function the same way, switches and buttons. And also we want to set the interaction type and toggle for these purposes. We can have two of them, both set to once or continuous. That right it to be on or off, but that's a little more complicated. But actually, this is a variable tutorial video, so I'll show you how to do that too. Now once again, switches and buttons do the same thing pretty much, so they're functionally the same. So we want to have two switches. And I want to use the variable of activate 9 again. In this first switch, or really, if in one switch, we want to have the output value to be 0. We also want to have the interaction type to be once. We can also have a continuous, but there's no point, so I'm just going to say once. And I've added a space there, so don't add space to that, just have that. So output value, that's it. And then in the other switch, we want to have output value be 0. And once again, the interaction type is once. So now the observed behavior of the light is one switch can turn it on. Hmm. I made a mistake. Let's see why that. 
is oh I remember now both set it to be with zero so make sure one output value of one switch is one and the other is zero or you can set it to whatever you want but so what but one is zero to begin with so one turns it on and one turns it off there you go and just before we look at this autopilot I also want to show you how to make an engine starter switch the way it works is you have pretty much a switch a series of switches that you have to activate before you can do something else and then you have another switch with the interaction type of once and then that starts the engine and to demonstrate this I have this little plane here so we have an ignition switch and a start switch and we also have battery and fuel but we're just going to ignore those for now so if we turn on the ignition nothing happens these lights here are off and if we click the starter switch then the lights will turn on and the engine will start and this switch here has an interaction type of once and this switch here has an interaction type of toggle and there's only one line in the variable setters code and that sets the value of the ignition switch to be zero when this switch is turned off or this starter switch so basically this is the ignition switch and this is the starter switch I have no idea what to call them actually this one is set to zero and this one is switched off and the way this works here there's just so the, it's these two lines of code here engine starter and actually engine start two can just be ignored so engine starter is the name of the input variable of the starter switch and engine on is the name the input variable of the left switch so of these of those two switches there it's the left switch, the ignition switch. And the way this works is the engine starter switch, since it's set to once, it will write a value of one by default to the variable engine starter. And then engine starter is the engine starter, this one here, one, times engine on, which is one already. And then when engine on is zero, then that pretty much resets this variable and we have to have engine on to be one in order to be able to set engine starter to one. And I'm thinking of a more complicated one where you have to hold the switch, like with an input value, or an input value, the interaction type of continuous. You have to hold the switch until a code of some, like some variable or really some engine starter. You have to hold it until it is above a certain value. For realism, this is actually the, so really, what this is meant to, to simulate is how in real life you have to it's like crank the engine using an, an electric starter motor in order to get combustion, like an, a combustion engine, not a jet engine, but any like combustion engine. You have to crank it somehow, and today that's done using an electric starter motor. And that's what that switch is, the starter switch. Now, I only have it, so I just need to click it once. And I guess some cars do have that. But for realism, like how an airplane it will be, you would have to hold the switch until the engine starts, you can't just click a button. But that's how to do a basic engine starter switch, that's not just a toggle the engine on or off. And this exact code is used on the SWL 10. And I was going to use it for the SWL 120's autopilot, well, the APU autopilot, but I think I'm going to experiment with having the inter interaction type of continuous and then ha having to hold it for a bit until the APU starts up past a certain value. And finally, the new autopilot. So this is the SOL 10, or really my slight remake of it, and it has this new autopilot and it uses what's called a PID controller. And I'm not actually sure how to describe it, but it's pretty much a uh, Simple function of funky trees is actually really complex, and it has these five n values: the target, current, proportional, integral, and derivative. The proportional, integral, and derivative are actually the three static numbers, so those don't change. You, s you set them in the PID controller, and then they don't change. And the target and current, those change a lot. So current is the current value. In this case, it's pretty much vertical speed. And so the current vertical speed is zero, of course, because we're on the ground. And the target vertical speed is what you want the current to be. I'll just turn on some stuff here. And in other news, I don't think I'll keep this 
thing where you can turn on and off the backlight of the, these panels because it's too much performance cost. I'll probably keep what I've done so far. Anyway, so you can see the altitude is currently 500 and our current altitude, as you can see here, is approximately 238 feet. The target altitude is 500. And this is actually vertical sp the target vertical speed, which is not 10, oh really, there we go. Which is not 10 because we're pretty close to the target, but if I set this to 1000, you can see that it's now 10. And also, the adjustments I've made on this plane to the autopilot are I've added a smooth function to the target vertical speed. So instead of just instantly snapping to 10 when you change the altitude in the autopilot control panel, which is very jerky, it will smoothly change. And while that may fix the, some of the problems, it won't fix everything, because the code I have for the autopilot is basically if you were to plot somehow it, it, in a graph, it will be a bunch of straight lines. Yeah, it's getting pretty complex for a YouTube video. Anyway, so for much I have this new autopilot. I have this switch that changes the code from the old code to the new code so I can compare things. And in this PID controller, I can change the proportional integral and derivative using these sets of buttons. I can adjust it in a big adjust, which is 0.5. Or small adjust. And I can do this for each of these. And I also have some ideal values. The proportional value is 200 and at 0.5. Oh boy. I'm gonna be here for a while. One moment, please. Three hours later. And there we go. And the derivative is 25. And the integral is 0.05. And you can see in the PID output category, what I found is so far especially with the new smoothing of the target. This autopilot is way better than the original, which was especially jerky when you tried to climb or descend from a level flight. And you can also notice this behavior in the heading. It will roll rapidly, and then it will overshoot the target, and then keep trying to get back to the... So actually, the to for the autopilot codes, the way my autopilot works is it takes, well, at least the old autopilot, and probably part of the new one, it takes your target heading, and then target altitude, just like I say heading, and then it won't just say try and match this heading, it sort of needs a way to know how to do that. So I then do a little bit of complex math, and I'm not sure which, I, I made some videos on it, I'm not sure which videos they are. It, I do a bit of complex math to translate your the target heading from your heading, and then based on that, it makes a bank angle and then that bank angle is anywhere from zero to a large number and then I clamp it so it can't exceed a bank angle of 25 degrees and then that way the plane can try and roll harder and then when it starts to get to the target heading it will slowly start to level out and, the and there's a few problems with that first of all if you were to change the heading with no smoothing it'll just rapidly roll to 25, overshoot that, then then really try and roll back, then forth, and eventually it will try and get to 25 and hold that. And also, when you get to the target, if you're 25 degrees from the target heading, you'll start to level out, and it just turns too slowly when it starts to level out, so I'm, I'm gonna have to somehow accelerate that or something. Shouldn't be too hard. And then same for the altitude, when you get when you start to get to the target the altitude, it will also level out. So I'm just going to show you how this flies, so not that time. Why is that 180? So I'll see you in the air. And also another small issue with the, especially the altitude autopilot, is when you first engage it, it will just rapidly smash up to the target, then overshoot it a bit. And I can't see an easy way to fix that, but it, at least the ch changing of altitude from nobody level autopilot flight is fixed. So we're still flying completely off the old codes, aside from the smoothing, which doesn't do much now because we're leveling off. So if I were to change the heading, watch how the plane rapidly rolls and then comes back. So pretty much it just, it changes too fast and then tries to get back to the target roll angle, main angle. And that's just the way with how it works. But with smoothing, as you can see in the altitude now, it will smoothly change and then it didn't jerk up and down, 
it smoothly changed the angle of attack to get then that got the ideal vertical speed and then it just did that because it, it responds to the ideal vertical speed pretty quickly it does not get it enough and then this switch here changes it over to the PID controller codes if I click this it changed you can see that it matches the target better so it gets the current to be the target more I guess you could call it that way and something it does do is somehow overshoot it a bit I'm not sure why it does that I'm still trying to figure that out though but if, it's all about the values of the proportional integral and derivative and as you can see that I've taken the integral down to zero again and now it is more closely meeting the target so right now at 2000 feet which is exactly what I ventured in and now it's down again so I'm not really sure how this works yet so I need a lot of testing though but even without the PID controller just smoothing off the altitude code made a big difference so it smoothly climbs up to 10,000 vertical speed 10,000 10, feet per minute and then it climbs that and that is it for this video if I think of any more things I can show you how to do in the variable system I'll of course make a video on that Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!